Hmm. You know, calling this series DVDR Hell is kind of an insult to Tequila and Benetti. Sitting through Tequila and Benetti isn't hell. The show is a treasure, and it needs a resurgence, goddammit. Therefore, whenever talking about Tequila and Benetti or any other lost TV gems, the show should be called DVDR Heaven. The episode Fetch This Pal, which is about Tequila having to pass K-9 training, was directed by prominent television director Rob Bowman, who also brought us the theatrical films The X-Files and Reign of Fire, but seemed to have returned to television after directing Electra. Writing credit goes to Tommy Thompson, who also served as a producer and writer for Quantum Leap, plus wrote the hard way influenced Tequila and Benetti episode Real Life. I see and fetch this pal, the show appears to have lost its budget and is now shot on shittio. But thankfully, there's still enough in the budget for burp jokes. I don't think he minds. <laughs> I can't believe you. Six tacos and a burrito? Just a light snack. And who fed him all of those, Benetti? Benetti and Garcia are busy not pulling over people speeding. Did you see that? that, that what? That car just ran a red light. Whoa, 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 that's not a car. That's a Rolls Royce. Let it go. Why? Because Rolls Royce means money. Money means power. Power means influence. Influence means wasted paperwork. Trust me. Your credit to the force, Benetti. But Garcia gets him back. No one's getting pulled over today. Those two girls, you just ran the red light. Let's go, roll it. Oh, 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 those aren't girls. Those are co-eds. And co-eds means tight bodies, and tight bodies means small bathing suits, and small bathing suits means lots of drooling, and lots of drooling means wasted paperwork. Trust me. Yes, and it also means higher sex appeal, which should mean higher ratings. Speaking of a lot of paperwork, remember that time Benetti shot a kid? The opening credits are here once again to remind you. Here's something we haven't gotten to yet. Let's talk a little bit about tequila first. The opening credits simply tell you that Tequila is playing the dog, as if maybe Tequila is the animal actor's real name, or that he's simply called the dog in the show, which he's not. In reality, the role of Tequila was played by five French Mastiffs, producers of the series originally intended on the dogs from Turner and Hooch to play the role of Tequila, but when that proved to be too difficult, the five new Tequilas were brought in from Birds and Animals Unlimited, a major company which supplies animals to TV shows. Each of the five dogs filled the role depending on the scene, Foster was the runner and did non-action sequences, Julio was the attack dog, Everest rode the motorcycles, Dart jumped and ran, and Max was also a jumper. Roger Schumacher, who also did training on Rin Tin Tin Canine Cop, had 12 weeks to train the dogs, with a lot of the training being done on set. Like most series of its kind, many of Tequila's scenes were shot after the main action was shot, but the dogs were still always present on set with the other actors. I don't know what became of the dogs after the show, but naturally, they each deserve their own star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Tequila and Benetti are called into a bomb threat at a museum, which seems to be in good hands. We've only retrieved half the pieces. There are millions of dollars in priceless art in there, and I am holding you personally responsible for any damage. How would you like to dial a phone with your big toe? See, Mr. Strickland is in charge here. He's gonna find some way to pin this on George McFly. Tequila tries talking to the other dog, which just cries at him, once again implying that Tequila is the only dog in the world who can talk. But that doesn't matter to Strickland. Officer Tequila? That's impossible. I run the canine qualification school for 15 years. That dog never came through. And so he went to night school. You know there's more important things going on right now. Like a bomb in a museum. I was doing bomb squad while you were still wetting yourself. Did somebody say witty? <laughs> well, I guess there is time for a piss joke. By the way, the bomb goes off. And I hope our people got out okay. Thanks, Tequila. Someone is definitely gonna pay for this, and that person is Tequila? The mayor wants his badge. Why? Why? Well, let's see, uh, maybe it has something to do with the fact that he relieved himself on the commander's foot. 
Really? No one is in trouble for the bomb going off in the museum? Bonetti wants to talk things over with Strickland, but then we hear the story about how Strickland fired cancer wife depression cop. Had a sergeant on the LAPD for 18 years. Good cop. His wife gets cancer and she dies. Two weeks later, he comes to work and he's drunk. Rinker didn't even try to help this guy. I mean, he busted him right off the force on the spot. This is a serious conversation. Tequila is really holding in that fart right now. We also find out Benetti is hell-bent on keeping Tequila as a partner because he himself once lost a partner in New York. It shows the growth of Tequila and Benetti's friendship, since in the past, Benetti had tried like hell to drop Tequila as a partner. Plus, with Tequila as a partner, you get loads of laughs. Are you sure? I mean, are you absolutely positive you want to talk to me right now? Only if you're sure it's not a bot. Yeah, who's that? <laughs> Unfortunately, Tequila hasn't passed canine certification, which definitely means the two of them are going to get detention. Man, I think this guy's out for both our tails. It's simple, just stop being a slacker. He hates that. Yeah, yeah, the bomber is still on the loose, but Tequila going through canine qualification is a much zanier plotline. <laughs> And it comes with its own teaser trailer. Right away, Tequila doesn't mesh well with the other dogs. Well, if it ain't Adolf Hitler with fangs, what it look like, homie? Achtung! Because he's German. What's that rule? Get any dog to talk and eventually he'll bring up Hitler. Benetti has an enemy too in John Calvin, Howie from the Paul Lind show, who is there to remind Benetti that he's banging his ex-wife. She's my ex-wife. Ex-wife? Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Guys, there's still a bomber on the loose. She's an amazing woman. She's very, um, flexible. You know, being a, a dancer and everything. That does it. Hey, guys. Yo, sweet pea. Ew, wait, was Benetti about to shoot that guy before Garcia walked up? Back at home, they're practicing in case someone sticks up a retro barber shop. Yeah! <laughs> but Nanny, you are bugging to the heights of bugginess. Take that to the bank, kid. <laughs> Attack this, pal. Tequila thinks that Benetti only wants to show up his ex-wife's lover, but even if that were true, Tequila still needs to pass in order to get his badge. But one of the more bizarre scenes in the entire series is when Captain Knight comes over to talk about the loss of Benetti's former partner, and in doing so, he talks about his own issues with loss, that being his dead dog. You lost a partner? No. But I lost a friend. His name was Scruffy. <laughs> Scruffy? You know, he could compare Benetti's loss with the fact that his fiance turned out to be a serial killer and Benetti shot her to death, but that's not brought up in this episode. Maybe because this episode was filmed first? I don't know. But the last episode to air references Knight's now dead fiance, probably because it was the one filmed directly after the perfect match. But forget that, Knight's dog story definitely continues. His hind legs were fused at birth. The other little kids used to call him Drumstick. Man, Home Dog was a serious loser. <laughs> you know, we've mentioned Thanks Tequila episodes in which the plot really doesn't have all that much to do with tequila, but this one is a perfect example of a dickhead tequila episode. You know, I tried to teach him how to fetch for a whole week before I realized he was deaf. What? He was deaf. Vet says it was caused by the brain tumor. Oh, the story gets worse. My folks told me later that's probably what drove him over the edge. Over the edge? We lived on the 35th floor. It's okay, though. The vet said he didn't really feel a thing. Bombs away! Splat! That's right. His dog, which had fused legs, a brain tumor, and was deaf, ended up killing himself. And Tequila finds this hilarious. Oh, and another bomb went off, this time causing casualties. 
This has gone too far. It's time for us to get serious. Oh, but come on, Captain Knight hasn't gotten to the part where Scruffy the dog got the Ebola virus. I'm sure there'd be some jokes in there somewhere. Homeboy and I will be back in your face after a few moments. If we're back from commercial, that usually means piano solo time. This is actually one of the few piano solos that really does tie into the episode's plot. It shows Garcia reading a book on the male ego, and Captain Knight presumably writing a script about his dead dog. <laughs> his dog is dead! So that's why Captain Knight wrote a dog script and needed to get Lloyd's approval. Also in the montage, Strickland does what I do every night, and oh yeah, the Mad Bomber's still around, but no time for that now. Obligatory dead kid cameo. Even though Terry is mentioned a lot in this episode, and it shows her picture not once but twice in the montage, implying that's the only picture of her, don't expect ex-wife Terry to be in any of the episodes other than the pilot. We've got training to attend to. You'll be scored on a one to ten point basis. Any questions? Yeah, did you ever have hair? Let's do it then. Marty McFly already asked that question back in 1955. I love that the German Shepherds are given their commands in German, or at the least with an S-C-H at the beginning of every word. If that's the case, how come Tequila's commands aren't given in French? Again, Tequila's doing poorly because he's being a slacker, even with his theme music. Tequila. Props for waiting all the way to episode 9 before you bust out the Tequila song. Since Tequila thinks in English, all he has to do is put a pen in his mouth and write something on a piece of paper. Not only will he pass, but they'll be millionaires. Instead, he's a disappointment. I wouldn't be too hard on him, Benetti. Takes a long time to train a dog for the streets. Um, Tequila has stopped serial killers, rapists, kidnappers, and has taken a bullet on more than one occasion for his partners. He may be the best cop ever! So much so that Benetti is still determined on saving Tequila's badge. This isn't about Terry. Oh, come on, New York, even I don't believe that. But what's it about, Benetti? Saving a good cop. Say what? After realizing Benetti actually cares for him, Tequila decides to do well in the program, which he should have been doing anyway to keep from getting fired. He finds the fake bomb and discovers it in true Tequila fashion by peeing on it, but that's still not enough. Five? What? How do you give him a five? He went right, right to it! He didn't do it by the numbers. What are you talking the about? The name of the test is sweep and locate. He didn't sweep, he only located. This is just revenge for causing him to wear diapers after putting a bomb in the toilet that he was shitting in. That's right, I switched it up a bit by bringing in a Problem Child 2 reference. And then Tequila is fired and the show ends. I'm sorry, B, I tried, but he ain't playing fair. Let's be fair, Tequila. You did try for only about two minutes. Yes, another bomb is found, this time in the hospital. Our bombers planted another one. Where? University Hospital. Cuts out the ambulance, right? Thanks, dickhead Tequila. Turns out the bomber is a Sergeant Klein. Long story short, the bomber is cancer wife depression cop. You think Klein's out for revenge, huh? I would be, wouldn't you? You'd plant bombs? No, I'm Sicilian. I'd shoot him. Yeah, like he did to Captain Knight's fiance. Klein is a demolition expert who specializes in booby traps, and Benetti is gonna bring him in the best way he knows how. Don't do it! By watching the man die. I wonder which dog was trained to confusingly watch the action from the background, or to provide the commentary. I can see the news interview now. He was a quiet man, just worked in his garden. That is classic, Foster. 
Oh yeah, there's still the bomb in the hospital. So I think we're forgetting why we're here. I know why I'm here. What I don't understand is what that beast is doing here. That beast is my part. Word up. Oh, I get it now. Tequila isn't being given a badge because they're all racist. Captain, that dog is not qualified. Says you. That's right. So what? So what if Tequila doesn't meet your canine standards? He can still help. He could get everybody in there killed. You know, technically, I think Strickland is right. But again, I think that all the killers in prison were put there because of Tequila. They tie Tequila up with a shoelace, that way he can break free and find the bomb. Again, Tequila should pass right away on the grounds that he knows how to work an elevator. Oh no, Julio is the bomb defusing dog and he's off today. Since the bomber was specifically targeting Strickland, Bonetti knows to pull the opposite wire Strickland would suggest. So Tequila gets his badge back. I still think this dog doesn't project the proper canine image, but... What the heck, here you go. But Strickland gets to keep Tequila's Ooh La La magazine. Oh, and one more plot wrap up. I just wanted to... <laughs> <laughs> Next time you see Terry, you tell her I said buongiorno. Agabishi. And then the lover goes and punches Terry. I knew there was a reason I liked this guy. <laughs> Thanks, Foster. Well, this episode of Tequila and Benetti is done, so what's coming on next? First came the voice, then the dream. If you believe in the impossible, anything can happen. Kevin Costner, Amy Madigan, and James Earl Jones star in Field of Dreams, Sunday on CBS. Yes, but was it a talking dog that told Ray to build the baseball field? I think not. Fetch This Pal certainly represents something common in the second half of the Tequila and Benetti episode list, which is that there are far more dog-centric plots. It isn't so much that there's a villain and Tequila is there to help track him down, but this particular plot also depends on Tequila going through training and trying to get his badge back. Case in point, the next episode of Tequila and Benetti, in which Tequila is shown winning an Oscar. Seriously.